you're in Beijing, as you, you mentioned at the very beginning, what's been your personal experience in, in dealing with everything that's going on right now and the overall interruption of sports? Man, getting to Beijing was the longest travel day of my life. I mean, left, we flew from L.A., me, me and the trainer, he's from the States as well. So we left L.A., I don't know what time. I just know we got to, uh, to Beijing at 4.30, I'm sorry. From the moment we landed for our layover in, in Vancouver, it seemed like life changed. Walking through the airport, we're starting to see people wearing the, the, the hazmat suits, goggles, masks, everywhere. From the moment you got to the gate, you had to take the temperature. You had to fill out these forms. You get on the plane during the flight. It was like three times they came up and they checked your temperature. I had to wear the mask the whole flight. Buddy sitting next to me had the goggles on and the big mask. And I'm like, man, what? <laughs> am I not taking this serious enough? Like, right. what's going on? And then when we land, the processes and the system that we had to go through just to get to where we're being quarantined took almost 12 hours. Mm. That's how serious it was. So that was a journey. And then getting into quarantine, quarantine for 14 days, staying in like a, a dorm style room, not being able to take a step outside of your dorm room or they coming to get you. It was it was brutal for me, you know. And the whole time we thinking we're going to start playing April 15th. But, you know, you, you you trying to stay, you lifting weights in your room. I'm running door to wall trying to do some type of suicide to stay. <laughs> just right, right, right. Up. And then, like, the third or fourth day, they're like, well, we're sorry, but we postponed it. We postponed the season. So then all of that went to hell. I just said, well, I'm just going to relax, man, and just, right. <laughs> just read and relax. And then everything just get Kim postponed. We get out of quarantine. I posted on Instagram you know, how happy I was just to step outside. Mm -hmm. so 14 days that that did a number on me just with some things that were going on in my life and then having to actually sit down in a foreign land and, and you know and deal with myself so that that was great and then ever since man we just been just been practicing waiting and every every day it seems like uh well we might start the season here then it gets pushed back it's the right. every day like that and just waiting and then you know you see it all across the world with league different leagues and stuff in my opinion they should just cancel and just get ready for next every league should cancel and take the proper steps get the proper guidelines ready for next year because you start these leagues up and a couple of players get it yeah. that's a head I don't think any league wants to deal with it. Right. Well, I, I think everybody's, I don't know who's following who. Like, I think everybody's waiting for, like, that first domino right. to fall. I don't know if the NBA is following the CBA or the CBA following the NBA. You know, you don't know who's who wants to step first. I, You know, I, I, I kind of feel the same way you do. I don't know if it's worth the risk. You know, what they're saying here now is that the NBA is, is, is leaning toward, you know, jumping for the playoffs, but they don't sound like they're overly convinced that they Ooh. should do it so i just think everybody needs to be safe and be cautious man That's why not <laughs> you know why not i know it's a lot of money at stake but at the same time that these lawsuits could come that that could total a lot of money as well yeah and i think they're going to change i think they're going to you know obviously we, we talk about the way that sports may look afterwards with without any fans um what are they have you gotten any inclination about what your experience is going to be like if and when you guys start playing again over there so if we were to start back, say, next month, it would be two cities and uh, all the teams are for eight teams, eight teams in one city, eight teams in the other. Okay. Uh, you would probably play, like, from 12 on to whatever time at night. No fans, all type of, you know, got to get tested when you leave, when you come back. You know, just strict rules like that. Right. Are y'all dealing with that now? Like as you go to practice and your daily? Are you oh, yeah. Well, in, in China, in Beijing, when you leave, you have to have a mask on. Every building you enter, either, you know, they're taking it physically, your, your, your temperature, or you're walking through to some type of scan. And then you have an app that you have to show that you have no abnormal, you know, conditions. And they're on top of it. Right. <laughs> they're not messing around out here. And mentally for you, I mean, I can only imagine, what is that like kind of having to just constantly prepare yet not know when or oh, if you're going to go back on the court? It's tough, man. It, it, it's definitely tough. But I, I appreciate it because I know a lot of people, people can't really get to the gym. People can't really wait for it. Stay in shape. I, you know, I'm, I'm able to do that. 
and now I'm able to walk around. You know, in the States, you're not really supposed to, you know, but, I, you know, I have my routine during this time. When I was back at home, I really didn't have that routine. Right. Uh, so I'm grateful for the routine I have now. And, you know, if it comes back, I'll be ready. If it doesn't, I'll, I'll be in good shape and be right. ready for whatever comes next. What, what are your, what are your, if you're talking to a 16-year-old kid, telling them about, you know, career choices, the path, what, what would be some of your advice you know, to a 16 year old who's, you know, on the fence about, you know, which direction should they go into college? Maybe their idea if it's MBA or bus. So we have, you know, I'm somebody that thinks that guys sometimes tend to focus too much on the MBA. What would be your, your advice to a young kid? So that that 16, 16 age right now. Keep working. Understand that this, this game can, you know, change generations for you and and not only in NBA like this 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 basketball can take you all over the world right you know if you handle your business you stay on top of it this basketball can take care of you and your family I would tell them the whole college route you know it's changing now so you know I'm not big but if you do want to go to college I would say get a meaningful degree like don't go to college just to Mm. just Get something from that education. I wish I would have done that, you know, looking back, of course. Would have got some kinesiology or learn about the human anatomy. So when you go into, you know, God willing, you don't get these injuries. But when you do, they're not talking over your head. Right. That's a good point. Explain it. Because, you know, we've been through some of the injuries I've had. You just be like... Yeah, okay. That's okay. So this is what I need to do? All right, cool. Let me go do it. And not really know what's going on. I think that that, that that's important to, to really try to get educated on something, learn about this money, learn about different trades, different things that you're interested in. And then just do your work wherever it takes you, you know, continue to try to improve yourself. College isn't the end all be all, the NBA isn't the end all be all, but just continue to work and time will tell. All right, that's a great point. Hey, Pay, something I like to ask all the players that we've had on here is do you feel like your additional interests off the court have helped make you a better player on the court and a better well-rounded person? I would say more of just more of the well-rounded being able to have a conversation with anybody, not just being all basketball all the time, which that's fine too, you know, but being able to, to talk life, you just be able to walk down the street, sit at a coffee shop and just spark up a conversation about whatever. I, I think that that has helped me. As far as basketball, I, I don't think so. I mean, maybe it gives you more purpose. You can find purpose from, like, let's say, if you like to travel, your perspectives can change to, you know, thinking you have it bad. So when you go over to, you know, I'm Nigerian, I've been to Nigeria, you see how some how people are living there. You're like, nah, this thing, I don't have nothing right, bad. Right, right. Let me put myself together. That's, I guess that's the... That's the balance we're trying to find, right? Is how much how much do you focus on the sport and getting the most out of the sport? And then how much do you focus on these other aspects of your life? Because you know, one of the things I always have, have said about particularly young guys that come in the NBA is they get taken advantage of because they're just not knowledgeable, right? They just don't have general knowledge about certain things and People take advantage of them and make, you know, people latch on, take advantage, take things and, and are in those relationships that aren't nourishing that player. And a lot of times that derails guys. So, you know, I've always tried to think about it, at least talk to young people about other aspects of their life to the degree that it doesn't. If you really want to get something out of this basketball, that it doesn't infringe or hurt basketball, but, but help and push you along further. You know what I'm saying? Sure. In basketball, sure. you know, It's a big piece. To add to the 16-year-old, man, I tell him to get off of social media, man. Mm. Be able to be able to, you know, to get rid of the distractions, be able to be still. You know, like folks is telling on themselves, especially right now in quarantine. People are getting on lives and just saying anything. They don't know anything. Right. And they don't, they don't know, know nothing. They don't know nothing. Right. They they know know like, nothing. Man, get off of social media, don't and what and, and focus on your path. Don't look left or right. You know, just yeah. focus on your path, get you a solid circle that you know going to ride for you and going to check you when you're wrong. There's a lot of guys nowadays, man, they, this generation is just, it's different. It's a little different. Now, how do you find that? How do you find that balance? Because in, in so, you know, one in one hand, you're saying find this circle, find the people that 
you know, can help you make good decisions. But then you go to rookie transition and a lot of the messaging that may come from rookie transition is you got to cut the people off that were with you, right, that had come along with you on this journey. So where does a guy find that middle ground? It's a cold world, man. It, man, that's a, <laughs> you got to look at that program, man, because <laughs> yeah. that message hasn't changed. And they got to stay true to themselves, man, really. Right. At the end of the day. But feels right. You know, you can hear all of that. And, and I would hope that they have elders in their lives that, that they've been able to get game from and they can continue to get game from. And sometimes you just got to go through life and you're going to take your bumps and bruises. And you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to bounce back. And I just say stay true to it, man. That's, that's a good point, man. Because, you know, you see a lot of a lot of basketball players, they come up with one trainer throughout high school and college. Then they get to the NBA and you don't see those same people around them anymore. Right. You know, it, and I, it, it's it's unfortunate. I just say you got to stick to the real stick. Stick to what you know. Stick to what has worked for you. You know, if right. you need help, you can always get that help. But don't. Don't go away. You know, don't go away from me. I, you know, I, I, I'm going to email somebody from there, man, because I think now, especially now, especially kids who are coming from these communities that are disadvantaged, mm -hmm. more than ever, I think all those players or whatever, whoever you are, you need to go back. Right. You need right. to go back and, and show them. Show them how you did it. Show them how you messed up. Show them that you ain't perfect or any of that. And, you know, and that's that's how you start building up community. Absolutely. Well, I look, man, I've got I've got a couple more questions. But I always like to ask guys about a moment in your life where you failed, but it it was an up it was a fail up moment where somewhere in that basketball journey things just didn't go the way you wanted, but that moment helped sort of spur you on to to something better. So where was that moment for you? One was John B. Line. Um, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, and, then, and then having to go to Turkey and playing in the Euro League and then taking it to another level, winning the championship and all the success out there, that was that, that, that was phenomenal. Right. And what and what did you learn about yourself in in those in those moments? I was stronger than I than I knew I was. And during that time, I was able to go back home to Nigeria and tell mm -hmm. my perspective began to change again. But just, just I was tougher, tougher than I knew I was. And then I, I, I was proud of myself to be able to leave, you know, leave the country, leave the family, sacrifice, you know, just to provide, you know, for myself and my loved ones. Nice. And then my last one is your morning routine. What, what do you do? What do you do in the morning, man, that um, sort of helps you get started, get your, get your perspective in the right, right way to, to face a day? Pray. I wake up, brush my teeth, of course. Do whatever I gotta do, then I, you know, get on my knees and I pray. Yeah. So, you know, God to set up the day. You know, I walk in his will. Absolutely. This might be a little bit different of a question for you, but what are you most looking forward to doing when appropriately the restrictions on people have been lifted? <laughs> Man, this is I think this is the new normal. I think I, I don't I don't know how much these restrictions are gonna get lifted. I would like to travel again, you know, I, of course. I would like to go to, to see the Machu Picchu. Definitely want to go see that when I get a chance and then visit Jamaica if mm -hmm. we get a chance. Yeah. Right. right. And get the whole experience, not, you know, not, not everybody wearing masks and such. Right, right. Well, we may be dealing with, this may, like you said, this may be our new, our new normal. We haven't quite, over here in the States right now, we're, we're, uh, yeah, they're just struggling. <laughs> yeah, they're struggling, man. These folks are just doing as they please. And um, we'll see, you know, we'll see what, what, what comes of this on the other side. But, man, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that you joined us, man. We know it's been a whirlwind, you know, and I appreciate the time, man. Like I said, I, I appreciate you from afar, man, just so you know that, man. I've always respected you. And once I, once I find guys that think and kind of, you know, use – their whole capacity, man. I always become a fan. So I'm rooting for you, man, and uh, wish you the best as you continue your basketball journey, man. For sure. Appreciate that, man. Thanks again, man. I appreciate y'all. appreciate you as well. You definitely look slim. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. I don't, have to, I don't have to carry all that weight. I don't need that 265 no more, man. I don't need it. I don't need it, man. Yeah. All right, Ekpe. Thank you. All right. We appreciate, appreciate it, man. man. Thank you.